Guys, you're going to watch this video all the way through. The reason why is I'm going to share with you this defense that I've been running and why it is so effective. Now, if you are new to the channel, I want to ask you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also, I do want to let you know that if you're not a member of our Patreon yet, you might want to consider doing that. It's only $10 a month. The reason why is because you're going to get every ebook and every update to every ebook that I release uh, while you're a member of the site. So we've already got 18 offensive and defensive ebooks. And I'm going to be dropping a major, major update in it uh, to uh, kind of expand upon the concept that I'm going to kind of I break the ice with in this video. We're going to really expound upon it in the membership. So if you want to sign up for that, if for nothing else, it's the best defense I've played all year long by far. So if you want to check it out, um, there'll be a link in the description below where you can sign up for it. Um, the Patreon is only $10 a month, so it's super, super cheap. And you get access to all the guides, and then you also get access to any new guides. And we typically update the Patreon. This week we released, I think, four update videos over the course of the entire week. So uh, we typically uh, release update videos throughout the week and stuff uh, as new stuff comes up or as we need to tweak stuff or change stuff. So really, really great deal for you. Um, and then we're also uh, really excited, going to be starting next week, our pro player film breakdowns. We're actually walking through almost every competitive Madden game from the Madden competitive season and really analyzing, dissecting what the best of the best are doing. So you want to get all that access to all that exclusive content, join the Patreon. I think it's a great deal for you and a really good place to get better. Now, without further ado, we're in the 4-6 playbook. I got to talk about this concept and I got to talk about where it originated from. And then I'm going to talk about how you can use it to stop uh, Bunch. Now, Bunch, it, you could use this concept for any formation. That's why I like it so much. Um, but you can, uh, of course, use it for Bunch as well, which we're going to get into in just a second. So um, where did this concept originate from? Well, you guys might know that I'm a big fan of match defense. Um, I've been running match for the better part of the last two years. Really, really intense uh, as far as just trying to dive in and learn everything that I can um, about the coverage. And what I've come to figure out about match is if you really, if you really break it down, match is basically... Um, a way that you can have four guys on the back end that are in man coverage almost, um, depending on the pattern distribution. And then you have the underneath guys that are going to be able to kind of pass stuff off underneath, like crossing routes and things like that. Well, if you think about it, um, one of the I did a video a little while back on cover one rat or cover one robber. Uh, in the two different coverages, but cover one hole, basically um, the idea or the concept behind that is how cover one, you know, Saban has dictated or, or said before on uh, different, different uh, coaching clinics and stuff that cover one is the best coverage in, 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 in any sport, any game, doesn't matter. So best, it says it's the best coverage in bowl. And, Really what this concept that I'm going to teach you in this video does is it kind of merges the two concepts um, into one defense that can be very, very difficult to, to beat uh, consistently. Because if you think about the routes in Madden, you really have a, um, a couple of key ones. You have, you know, underneath patterns. And when I say underneath, I'm going to say underneath patterns like 10 to 15 yards, probably 10 yards and under. And those patterns are out routes. Slant routes, um, little curls, uh, hitches, crossing routes like drag routes, um, and flat routes. That's pretty much what you're dealing with under that space. Okay. Then you have uh, what I call is vertical routes, right? So a crossing route, a post route, a um, a crossing route, a post route, a streak route, a corner route, um, a ten yard like that. That's kind of the major stuff. Well, if you think about it, I was running cover one for a long time this year for a lot and, and, and ran it against some really good offenses. And what you'll find is if you run cover one against really, really good offenses, the primary routes that are going to be difficult to guard are slant routes, um, out routes to the running back, deep, uh, skinny post kind of, um, but primarily crossing routes, slant routes, and out routes to the running back. If you think about that, and then you go back to match coverage for just a second. Guess what the hardest things to guard are? Slant routes. Out routes to the running back. Option routes to the running back. Deep crossers, kind of. Uh, but you can kind of actually play that fairly decently. Depending on the coverage. Depending on who who's running that. 
And so that's where this concept kind of originated from. And basically what I wanted to do was take some adjustments that I was doing from cover one and basically apply that to match because match is going to play like man coverage if they run routes that dictate that they need to be played by man coverage, which are cross routes, corner routes, post routes. Okay. So with that in mind, um, and, and, and we had, we're going to get into wheels as of, of course, we're going to talk about wheels, um, but we're going to mainly primarily in this video kind of take a look at some of this. So we're going to come out in nickel 335 uh, uh, normal and audible down to cover four show two out of wide. Why do we want to do that? Because cover four show two out of wide is basically cover four quarters, whereas cover four drop in 335 normal is spot drop cover four, which basically means that they are going to drop into zone, but they're not going to match routes. Okay. So um, the reason, one of the other real reasons why we like to audible from 335 to 335 wide is because, number one, you get safeties on the field that jump better in coverage. But most importantly, you have a lot of flexibility with your two linebackers that are now the outside edges of the, of the 335 wide. And what, that, what I mean by that is now those linebackers, they get adjustments that they, they wouldn't normally get. So you can cross-man them on any receiver on the field, which is very advantageous when we talk about um, dealing with some of the problems that match coverage can have. So anyways, let's take a look at this. I'm pretty jacked up about this, if you can't tell. And if you want to get some real serious defensive um, uh, defensive breakdown, get in the Patreon for this because we're going to actually go through um, probably – we're going to spend a significant amount of time with this in particular coverage and showing how it applies to certain routes, certain formations, not just bunch. So I'm pretty excited to do that breakdown. Um, and, and again, if you want to get it, there's a link in the description where you can join it. So we're audible now to cover four show two, and then we press. Now, what we get in, in bunch, and we've talked about this before, but it's basically box check. So what that essentially boils down to is on the right side of the field, um, the coverage is going to play a certain way. And on the left side of the field, the coverage is going to play a different way. You know, TCU would say that they play what's called a two quarterback defense, which basically what that means is that these guys right here, these safeties are the quarterbacks in the defense. So they're going to give a different call on this side. This safety would in, in, in a real TCU defense, this safety would give a certain call that would dictate a coverage to this side of the field. And then this safety would give a certain call that would dictate a coverage to this side of the field. Now the passing strength is basically asking the question, where is the formation, uh, where is the formation's passing strength? So in this example, the formation's passing strength would be to the three wide receiver side or the bunch side of the field. What that means is that's now where your, of course, your nickel is going to be. And it's also going to mean where your three rec is going to open up in a relationship with. So you're going to basically have, if you think about it, one, two, three, four defenders on three. And then backside, we've got three on two. Now, this guy right here is kind of... Um, kind of an interesting defender in quarters when we talk about again this is a little bit of a a little bit of a quarters deal but when we're talking about defending three by one formations this guy is um, essentially in poached territory so you get two specific uh, tweaks to the coverage here you get a box check based off the compression of the right side of the field so because it's compressed they're going to play in box check which we've talked about that before essentially what that means is this guy's taking the top inside corner of the box this guy's taking the outside corner this guy's taking the first to the flat and then this guy's taking any kind of guy coming across the formation um on like a shallow cross or something like that and then this guy is what we're calling poach this is a three by one check which basically dictates because there's no vertical threat over here the running back is really kind of null and void especially when you're talking match coverage the running back and we're going to get to that in just a second because in madden running backs are very valuable route runners so in in in, in general way people defend the running back most of the time they don't put as much resources as you have to in madden to be able to slow him down however what i'm so what i'm getting at here is because there's no slot receiver on the left side this guy is actually going to play what is called poach, which means basically he's coming over here and working as almost like a robber. And if there's a crosser, he's going to carry that crosser across the, the formation. It's like a deep crosser, like verticals, for example. And then this guy is actually going to be in uh, what was, what's called uh, solo. What that basically means is because there's a solo receiver on the left side of the field, he's going to guard him wherever he goes in man coverage. 
Now, this guy, like I said, is basically going to turn into a robber. So let's say they run a three-level flood to the right, like a streak, a corner, and a flat. So uh, Miller runs a streak, uh, Godwin runs a corner, and Gronk runs a flat. This guy right here doesn't is not concerned with that. So now he's able to help out with like a, a deep dig or a deep post to the to the front side of the formation. Okay, now. Um, and then, and then lastly, this guy right here is basically in man coverage on the running back, and we're going to talk about a little bit of a check that we can do uh, within this to kind of create the same basic principle without requiring us to uh, get in a situation where if they run the running back on an in route and they run this guy on a slant, that we could be in problematic territory. So you see here, all the all everybody goes over here, and now you see how open that slant is. And that's that's again, that's a way that you can break match. And like I said, what breaks match? Slants, crop, some of that stuff, the same stuff that kind of messes with cover one. So how do we get around it? And, and again, I've, I've been talking for a while, super jacked up to talk about this. So how do we get around some of this stuff? Well, we get around it with honestly a really simple check or a real simple adjustment. What we're going to do in our quarters is we're going to actually use our linebackers and our slot cornerback, our underneath defenders, to kind of, and again, I, this is all something that I've just been working on um, from an adjustments perspective. I'm going to call it, and again, you know, it's not, it's not, again, I'm not trying to be exactly like TCU. I'm not trying to be exactly like Brandon Staley uh, from the Chargers or some of the, you know, split field safety uh, defensive coordinators. What I'm trying to do is take principles from them and apply it to the game and then help you understand how we can actually make this better. And the way that I like to make this better is specifically, especially with Bunch, is through utilizing adjustments like we do in Madden. So what that boils down to is who do I want to use in the defense? Well, it's kind of obvious you're going to use this guy right here, and you want to blitz him. Why do you want to blitz him? Well, because you want to blitz him because you're going to get better sheds. So we're going to first uh, press coverage, blitz our user, and then we're going to crash our line out. Now that's going to give us really good sheds. And then from that point, we have a couple of players that we can mess with. We can mess with one of these guys. We can bluff blitz one of these three guys. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we can utilize this guy in any coverage that we want to. And that's still going to give us good sheds. We're going to have two man, uh, a two-man pass rush that's going to generate pretty decent uh, block shed. Why? Because the rule of four, right? Because we have a bluff blitz and we blitz our user, the game thinks that we're rushing four people. We've talked about this since August. Now, the key with this is understanding again where you're vulnerable so in this specific scenario in this specific scenario what we're going to do is we're going to drop both linebackers in purple zones and then we're going to man the slot up on the um we're going to man the slot up on the slot receiver so you get a nice little kind of bump on him real real aggressive coverage and then lastly, we're going to take the three rec, and instead of putting it over here, because we already have four drop over here with the safety overhang, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually put it over here. Why? Well, because against sets like Gun Bunch, where the running back is on the opposite side of the tight end, um, another set like this would be wide trips weak. Um, trips Y flex, U trips. These are these are sets. What happens is this guy right here will cover much better in man coverage, basically on the running back if he goes out into coverage. If he doesn't go out, then this guy will drop into the general kind of robber area of a three receiver hook. So then we're standing right here. And then lastly, you can kind of do whatever you want with this guy. This guy is another defender. I call them swing defenders. Um, you could call them overhangs. You, there's a jokers, whatever, you can, whatever name you want. But this guy right here is another defender that we could do something with. So let's say they're killing us on tight end wheels. There's no, we can man this guy up on a tight end wheel. And we still have that underneath concept with the curl flats and the three wrecks, which those those three zones together are going to stop a majority of the underneath passing concepts that people are going to create. So now what we're able to do is have a lot of freedom with our user and basically take a look at crossing routes and deep posts just like we would in cover one robber. We don't have to work at any flooding concept to the right. We got it. Flood, bagged. Bench pivot, bagged. Z spot and go, bagged. Verticals, by and large, bagged, um, and I'll show you that right here. So if they go to verticals and they put the running back wheel out here, and we're standing right here, of course. Um, snap the ball. You see here, 
my three rec uh, because I hit contain. You don't want to put contain, but I mean, you see right there, that's pretty dang good coverage. That's pretty dang good coverage, and I'll show you um, the replay, and we'll talk through it. I want to show it one more time what the actual correct uh, correct adjustments. So we go uh, purple, both linebackers, man this guy up on the slot, bluff blitz here, and then you're done. And then, you, and like I said, you can take this guy here. If you want to manually back this guy up, you certainly can. That can help um, against those skinny posts and stuff like that because the route running ability won't activate because he's so deep off the ball. That's a, a great little technique to do. If you feel like you have a good corner that can play press, then put him over there and play press. Um, and then, of course, like I said, you can man that guy up on the tight end just to kind of protect against the major things they're going to do at a bunch. And the major things they're going to do at a bunch is verticals, wheel routes to the tight end, and running back. Those are the two main things you've got to think about. So here it is. We're going to open up here. And as you can see, we're over here helping on this. And then we can bail back to that. And you see, I mean, it's a really, really good thing. And, and, and I will say um, it does help. It does help to pass commit after you've got uh, all your adjustments in. So you set up your adjustments. Now you're pass committing to try to get this guy um, on the left side to go out. For whatever reason, he's being a little weird. And, and most of the time, you have no problem with this. He'll go right out there. But for whatever reason, I think it's because he's slow. But anyway, you're right in this area. You're right in this area. Okay? So that is um, the coverage that I really like against Bunch. Now, let me see if I can show. Um, let me let me put a linebacker in there, and that typically helps that a little bit. So let's put Judon over there, and let's put Vinoy here. And then we'll just come out on Bunch Trail, because I want to talk about the skinny post for just a second. So one more time, verticals. This time we'll do mesh spot. This is a very popular, um, very, very popular play. So we're just going to go boom, boom, boom. Um, and then again, this exact same adjustments, purple, purple, boom, and then three rec right there. Now you have cross man on the tight end. And then you, if you want to, what the cool part about this is, let's say for example, you, let's say for example, you want to take this guy and cross man instead of purple in him, you want to cross man him on the running back because they're just running so many wheel routes. Do it. Cross man him on the running back. And then throw this guy in a purple zone, and then take this guy backside, and um, and you can man him up on the tight end. Now I'm not gonna for whatever reason the game's being a little weird with me right now. I can't get him manned up, but anyway, let me show you this route to the running back. And you see how I mean, there it is, there it is, and you know again it's it, it you 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 adjust this based off tendencies, so the slot corner. What's interesting is you can man up the slot corner out of wide. You can't man him up on Mike Evans, but you can man him up on the running back. So we can man them running back up all the way across the field. And so if they're in a situation where they're just running wheel route after wheel route, we can do something like this where we put the three rack on the backside. Now we've got a ton of coverage backside for this. And and then, you know, again, you can the point is you can adapt this however you want to. Um, the major thing you want to keep intact is your matching concepts if they run vertical routes which in this scenario the this guy like i said is a wild card defender you don't have to have him because he's not and and, and and then the other thing is let's say you're manning up somebody so in, in a three by one concept if every receiver runs vertical like, like let's say the slot runs vertical let's say miller runs vertical and, and gronk runs vertical technically this guy is supposed to cover number three vertical but we've cross manned him on him anyway so he's technically doing the job anyway it doesn't really matter so anyways, here we go. Same concept. Now we've got the cross manning from the slot. And you see right here, um, that time we did complete it because the slot checked out of it. And that's why I like the linebackers a little better. But but anyways, that's the idea. And um, this is this is a really, really, really good coverage. Um, and then again, like I said, if you use a three rec, the three rec is super underrated as well. And then we still have we still have the concept. Um, that was is really really effective specifically against um, specifically against uh, corner routes so you know that that really builds upon itself honestly it really it really builds upon itself 
and um, it's it's one of the main reasons why this three rec works significantly better in game. For some reason, practice mode is honestly being a little bit weird. Uh, but I did want to take just a quick second. So we talked about verticals. Uh, let me talk about flood just real quick while we're on it. I mean, we're already deep in the video, so if you're sticking around, it means you're really enjoying this. So uh, we're already deep into this video. But anyways, let me show you. So this is that again that core basic, that basic 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 adjustment right that we talked about purples made up the slot you can leave this guy here until they make you have to do something with him leave him there uh, but what you're going to see now is boom you're here that guy peels in, into coverage on the back and now you got a curl flat out there that's going to kind of play the out route and kind of play the uh the the flood or the um the tight end route okay so that's flood um, and then of course again you're in the middle of the field you you want to be able to have to only use, and I call this a box in one zone. The reason I call it that is just because you're basically the man in the middle, and you're the guy that's going to take something if it's a problem. And that's you know we're trying to build the defense to where it can it can complement your user, and that's what I really feel like we've been able to do with this coverage. So now let's talk about um, so that's flood um, Z spawn and go. There's not a ton to talk about with this, but I mean we can talk about it. So let's say they do that. Um, basically, Z spot and go. You don't have to worry about anything to the t to the right side of the field. So, again, you're going purple, purple, boom, boom, and then again, you're right here. Okay. So, again, you don't have to worry about anything on the right. Everything on the right should be bagged. So you're here. Okay. And you see here, we have great coverage on that. Great coverage. Great, 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 great coverage. So that's a great defense for this. And then another uh, setup that you'll see, um, this is something that Skimbo runs. I think Joke was actually running this too. It's basically something like this a little bit. Um, you could take this backside guy and do whatever you want. Typically, you're either going to get an in and a out route or a wheel route or a wheel. I mean, you're going to get different combinations, but it's, it's essentially all geared toward that. Um and then, and then now you've got the outside guy in the corner. Well, we don't have him in man coverage, right? Um, this is one of the reasons why they're going to try to utilize that. Well, we don't have him in man coverage. That's actually better for our match. And what you're going to notice here is that outside quarter is so, is completely free to isolate on that route. Completely free. So anyone that runs a corner route from the bunch side, the tight end, the outside slot, the inside slot, doesn't matter. They're all going to get lurked by that outside quarter. Um, technically, the outside slot, um, technically, the inside slot has the best chance to get open because you manned him up, okay, because you manned him up. But because you're playing press on him um, and you got a guy right in his face, it's really hard for that corner route to be manned. I'm just telling you, it's really, really hard for that corner route to be manned. Um, let's take one more uh, concept for today, and that is going to be the route to the post, the skinny post. So um, the skinny post, this is what you're going to, I mean, people are going to run this. When they see you're in match, that's what they're going to go to. You'll see that the skinny post is going to get double teamed up the seam and a lot of times going to get completely boxed. Okay. Now let's say you're getting really adjusty with your match and you're saying, well, this guy's going on the tight end, this guy's going on the slide, this guy's over here. You know, you're getting really adjusted. So this is kind of what you come up with, right? If you're in a situation like this, there's really not a major purpose for this defender. So if you want to rotate him, you certainly can. Okay, you certainly can do that. But also, let's take a look at Bunch Trail. So it, it, typically, they're going to block their, they're going to maybe, I mean, well, let's just put him on a flat. You know, typically, it's going to be something like this with a wheel. Okay, this is a good Bunch Trail set. What you should see here is obviously in your user here, you're lurking right in here. But what you'll see here is that skinny post, that backside corner zone should hang with it. And then like I said though, what you can do off of this is you can just simply shade up. If you just shade up here, notice it puts the curl flats out there. And then now you can feel free to just man up that linebacker on the slot. And then you're you're pretty much it's a little bit easier to set this up. I don't like the fact that the linebacker is not as good in coverage as the slot cornerback. That's one of the reasons why I like if I can at all possible if I know that I'm gonna want to use that slot corner, then I would like to. But um, anyways, if you're getting bunch trail a lot, then just shade this guy up. Now what you'll notice, watch. 
he's going to have a lot more inside leverage, and the backside safety is going to have a lot more inside leverage. And then another easy solution, another easy solution. We want the solutions to be as easy as possible. You can just manually back him off. And by manually backing him off, you're going to find that this is going to significantly help your coverage. Obviously, once again, I want to stress, you're in the middle of the field. You know, you're in the middle of the field, and they're going to basically high-low you um, if you want to. An easy solution is, you know, again, take circle here, and you could man him up if you want to. Um, if this is if they're just spamming this play, but now you see he's got a little bit better leverage against that guy, and that's why any any time you're playing match, any time you're playing match, this guy right here's got to be a dog. This guy right here's got to be a, a beast of a player. He's got to be one of your your top top corner needs to be over there. You might even put one step ahead on this dude. I mean, you know, th this guy needs to be your guy that's going to cover every single time. And if you have that, if you have a, let's say you have a one step here, and let's say you have a one step here, now all of a sudden your coverage is pretty dang locked down. And you've, you've got your best, the thing about match, you've got your best players in position to make the best plays that they can make. So to me, that's another thing, that another layer that you can add on to this. And again, um, you know, Bunch Trail is a good play. I'm not saying it's not. But I'm just saying, because he is getting roasted here, but it's primarily because of his ability to cover in man. Mills is not as good as McCourty or Gilmore or J.C. Jackson. So in this example, if we flip this, let me just show you this real quick. So if we flip this, let me make sure, let me see if I know, see if I can figure it out. Um, so anyways, we're, we're going to flip this play. And this guy's a man here. So there's your coverage, if you will. And again, if you have this guy in a quarter, he'll cover, he'll help on the post all day long. It really, you're really not in a lot of trouble if that guy's in a quarter. It's when you take that guy and you're saying, I got to stop a wheel and they catch you in bunch trail, that could be a little bit of a problem. Uh, could be a little bit of a problem. Most of the time, if they run bunch trail, they're going to block the tight end, though, by the way. So then that is going to allow that, free that guy up. But let's just say you get here. Now, J.C. Jackson against a much better, faster receiver, but you got a better corner. And that's what I'm saying. Like, as long as you have a, a stud of a corner out there, they most of the time are going to have a lot more difficulty hitting that route than they probably think that they do. Okay? So, anyways, i talked for a long time. I really enjoy this defense. I'm going to talk a lot more about it in the Patreon. This is literally the tip of the iceberg. If you want to get the Patreon membership so that you can get access to all that stuff, there's a link in the description below where you can sign up for just 10 bucks. I really hope that you enjoyed the video, and I hope that it showed you some different concepts and different things that you can do on the defensive side of the ball that can significantly elevate your game in terms of being able to cover the whole field. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.